this will be perhaps a quite unconclusive video. But anyway, I wanted to show the uh, first experiments that I did to find out the inductance of, say, uh, these kinds of coils. So with a, with a heavy metal core, steel core, of course special steel, but anyway, uh, this for instance, or this coil, or such a transformer, or whatever. And uh, I found on the World Wide Web not so many good um, test circuits to find out the real inductance. I had, by the way, this beautiful book, the Radio Laboratory Handbook. And this book showed quite a few circuits. It's a long time ago, 1936 uh, as far as I know. This was the laboratory of the author of the book. That, look, that looks good. Anyway, I found on page 244 all kinds of circuits to uh, measure the inductance of coils. I want to show them. I hope that you can read it from this distance. And the measurement uh, uh, issues are, in my opinion, quite uh, troublesome. Of course, the results are perfect. These are very reliable measurements, but to make, for instance, such a circuit, that's quite a problem. Uh, you will go to very, uh, say, sophisticated and high quality uh, materials to find out um, to not to find out, but to bridge to make such a bridge. And this is, for instance, an interesting method: high inductances by Dice shunt method. Perhaps interesting. I pen over somewhat. So that you can take notice of this beautiful old book with all these very interesting uh, schematics and the Maxwell bridge and that is what I will talk about here. This is also a Maxwell bridge The Owen Bridge, here all kinds of measurements, measure techniques. This is, by the way, the circuit that you will often find on the World Wide Web. The problem, however, with this circuit is that, as far as I can see, you don't measure pure inductance, but you measure reactance of the coil. Because uh, every coil has a, say, parallel capacitance here. Also these coils, between the windings, there is parallel capacitance. And this is another way to show the same circuit. That is often on the World Wide Web. And they tell that they measure inductance. But in my opinion, that is not completely true because this circuit is frequency dependent. When you change the frequency, the uh, resistance of the coil will also change. And that means that you get another voltage readout here, AC voltmeter. Uh, so 
in my opinion that's not a good circuit perhaps when you align it very precisely to uh, say 50 hertz or so or whatever uh, it could work could give an ID but I found in this book a Dutch book uh, in my opinion a good setup of the so-called Maxwell Bridge. This is, by the way, the information about that book. I cannot uh, say, show everything because it's copyrighted. Anyway, the book shows this. And as the Maxwell Bridge uh, for resistors in this bridge, here is the unknown coil. Here we have a kind of null detector and with this um, resistor you can set, say, you can find where all the uh, voltages in the bridge null out. I don't have enough time to explain that very precisely, but anyway, the bridge theory in general says that when the values here are exactly the same, be it capacitance or resistance or whatever, the, the bridge will get to an equilibrium and the voltage here between these two poles, electrodes, is nulled out. And these are the formulas that belong to this Maxwell bridge for its equilibrium. I made it in this way. I did a few experiments and found that the circuit in the book worked properly and that was very good, of course. But I changed it in this way that I used here three potentiometers and here the unknown coil and here the, say, capacitive element of that bridge. And I hope that with this uh, circuit, I can also take in account, uh, <coughs> so I can null out in a certain way the capacitive, <coughs> sorry, the capacitive um, element that's always present in such a coil, such a big coil, of course, also in smaller coils, uh, say 10 microhenry, 5 microhenry, etc., etc. So short wave coils, but here, when you have such a coil dense wound on a metal core, uh, my opinion is that there must be a lot of capacitance between the windings. And of course, I don't know that for sure. And in this book, this beautiful old book, there are techniques to find out whether um, there is a certain capacitance between all the windings and also a test method to um, take them in account. So to read the pure inductance. Anyway, so I made a tree. Um, 1k potentiometers and they are here and I tested it and found out that there are two good capacitor values to test these kind of heavy coils say in the milli henry up to the one henry or more henry range and that is this I made a kind of non-polar capacitor of 50 microfarad and a non-polar capacitor of one microfarad and with that one microfarad capacitor I could measure in a proper way this coil. So I think it's in the milli henry range and I assume but don't know that for sure I have to do much more experiments and study to find out what this is all about but I assume these coils must be in the 
uh, one Henry range or 20 Henry, I really don't know. Have to find that out. Uh, of course, according to all the formulas that were given in that book. Anyway, two capacitors worked good. And now I've connected here to the circuit this transformer, 220 volt, say 12 volts or so at the secondary. And the primary, primary winding is 55 DC ohms. And when you connect that in this circuit, do experiments. You can do. You can connect any coil here, this one or that one or that one. So the heavier uh, coils. And turn all these potentiometers, three of them, till you find the null out of that coil. Here it is not nulled out. And here you see again kind of. But here you will find, and you have to search in a certain way, but you will always find when you turn these three potentiometers somewhere a point where the 50 Hertz it's connected here to a 25 volts AC source of 50 Hertz when that 50 Hertz is nulled out and the good thing from that uh, you see it very good the good thing from that uh, Maxwell bridge is that it is frequency independent. That's in this book and I trust this book. It's made for educational purposes in schools etc. Uh, so you can see here a point you have to search where these three potentiometers show a value, have a value where um, the frequency is nulled out. And then you can use the formula, this formula to calculate the inductance. And I've done some measurements, I show them here. I give them totally for free. Uh, uh, I told that it is a not very conclusive video up until now. Apart from that Maxwell bridge, that's absolutely a sure, surely properly working way of um, measuring uh, inductances, especially the higher ones. So these are the my measuring results at first sight I have to do much more study but anyway I only wanted to show that it's very well possible to uh, find out the real uh, inductance value of these transformers by using this Maxwell bridge. So when, um, when all is nulled out, disconnect the transformer, disconnect the power supply, of course you will see nothing on the scope, and then uh, solder out the resistor, of course you can also use a switch, solder out, measure these three resistors and apply them to the formula. That's what I've done here. So that's my first idea to uh, make a measuring device for these coils. And of course I've uh, drawn here switches by purpose of course, so that you can easily measure the resistor values. You can also do that with crocodile clips, etc, etc. 
So, only a first ID. I hope it uh, can help to do experiments.